dear students today under the subject of business environment topic we are going to learn is inflation inflation is a very important economic phenomena which has made a several impact on the different section of society it is understood that due to inflation the war has been caused there is psychological distress has been caused in our society that the military coup or the government change has happened that the ruining of the nation and the ruining of business organization has happened due to this economic phenomena called inflation what is this inflation all about as a different economist defines inflation in the different manner at different time in general inflation has all the relationship with the money with the supply of goods and the pricing of it so in general it is interrelationship between the supply of money and supply of goods and services for the consumer let's see what professor crowda says about inflation he defines inflation is a state in which the value of money is falling prices are rising inflation is usually associated with the rising activities and employment as far as rising of price is concerned it cannot happen only because of inflation there are several factors also in the market which causes the rise of the price so the definition given by professor crowder cannot be considered as a complete and detailed definition of the word inflation another definition given by professor kemrer is inflation is too much money and deposit currency in relation to the physical volume of business being done here professor has made clear relationship between the physical volume of business that means the supply of goods and services with the money but the consequences of that relationship has not been elaborated in this definition another definition given by paul enzik is inflation may be defined as a state of disequilibrium in which an expansion of purchasing power tends to cause or in effect of an increase in the price level here mr paul has made very clear about the disequilibrium of the money and the goods and services disequilibrium means that balance distorted it means either the money or the goods or services in the market are in improper level in the market the demand of money or the supply of money might be higher or lesser then the demand or supply of goods and services in the respective market that will effect an increase in the price level of respective goods and services webster dictionary for a common man has defined inflation as follows an increase in the volume of money and credit relative to available goods resulting in a substantial and continuing rise in the price level we should keep in mind here they made it very clear that continuing rise in the price level it means the price level rise should sustain period of time and that change should not going downwards because if the prices are going down the situation cannot be called as inflation we can summarize this definition in these words a sustained rise in the general level of prices of goods and services in an economy over a period of time leading to fall in purchasing power of money is known as state of inflation let's reread the definition and understand the key point of definition to make it clear what inflation exactly is a sustained rise it means this rise is not for a day for a week or a month it is for a longer period of time where it cannot happen due to a certain reason which is not part of the money supply or the good supply is causing the inflation it means the neutralizing all other efforts which can affect the price change and the level is rising for a longer period of time then it says the fall in the purchasing power of money that means that whatever the goods or services a consumer can avail in a year if in the next year he can avail the same services or the he can buy the same goods by the more money then the difference paid by him on the highest side would be 
the loss of the purchasing power or the fall of the purchasing power of the money and if you convert that purchasing power fall in the percentage terms then it will be the rate of inflation in that economy. As we have understood the concept of inflation, now let us see from where the inflation started in our life, in our society, in our economics. The moment human being evolved their economy from the barter system to the currency system, the supply of the currency and the supply of goods and the relationship in between them came into the picture. In the same time, the concept and the phenomena of inflation came in existence. If you look at the Kosik Basu's definition or actually the elaboration of the history of in inflation, then it is as follows. Inflation has been with the humankind ever since we moved away from barter to the use of mediums of exchange like paper, money, precious metals or even cigarettes as happened in a prisoners of war camp during the Second World War. This has been referred from Redford written in 1945. And the paper presented by Mr. Kosik Basu, the Chief Economic Advisor, Ministry of Finance, Government of India. Here, as this detailed elaboration explains that when in the time of monarchy, the king started using the precious metal like gold as a currency, then to increase their wealth or the monetary power into the society or their kingdom, they used to take the gold back, mix it with the brass, copper or silver and make more currencies with the same quantity of gold and reissue the currency. That way, king used to have more currency and more monetary power in their kingdom. But same time, as the gold value was reduced in the currency, the currency value used to get devaluated. And because the, de the currency was devaluated, of course, they have to pay more money to buy the same quantity of the goods which they used to buy earlier in the lesser quantity of the money. Even on the war time, when there was a cases like in second world war the japan was losing then the paper currency of the japan in the areas which were controlled by japan was losing like anything even in the war camps prisoner who used to buy secrets against the money on the respective currency all the war prisoners they had a several problem of the inflation at that time as we see in our history especially in the 30s and 40s we have seen the severe incidences of inflation. Some of the non-inflation cases are German inflation, Hungary inflation and Great Chinese inflation etc. Let us discuss what happened in the German hyperinflation 1923. This inflation started in 1923 and we sustained till 1924 where the German value got devaluated like anything in the market. and. German economy got poorer and poorer. It is assumed and believed that it was the major cause in the German society for the origin of Nazism against their existing government and create a nation which has a strong economy. Even the German psychiatrist and the physicians as reported to having a patients who are suffering from the certain disease which is called as a cipher stroke where people got habits of writing zeros unnecessary with the different uh, units without any requirement for the, those many zeros and the zeros were not in a tens or thousands but they were writing and making computation in billions and trillions. Even it happened that if you ask in that contemporary time in normal German how many kids you have and instead of saying two you would reply two trillion. So that was the inflation era of the Germany which is detailed elaborated by Liaka Tamad and lots of finance. Next major hyperinflation came in Hungary in the time of 1945 to 1946. Pengo which was the currency of Hungary in 1st August 1945 the value of Pengo was reduced till 31st July 1946 to 38 into 10 the power 27. It means one Pengo purchase power or the quantity which you can buy in the one pango in August 1945, you have to pay 38 into 10 to the power 26 zeros for the same quantity in the July 1946. Finally, 
the Hungary government decided to change the currency to foreign and where the foreign has a different valuation for the pango and exchange complete currency in the market. This is like post second world war inflation. Other examples of inflation are Russia's December 1921 to January 1924, Greece hyperinflation of 1943, Zimbabwe 2008 great inflation which ruined the economy of the respective countries. Our country has also faced inflation in the different time phase. Post independence, the highest ever inflation faced by our country in the era of 1973 November to 1974 December. This 14 months India has witnessed inflation rate about 20 percent. There are several causes behind it and behind this high inflation rate which we shall discuss in the topic in the same session in the later stage. But we shall keep in mind that till June to September 1974, we India never witnessed inflation less than 30 percent. In fact, highest ever inflation post independence faced by India is 33 percent which happened in the same period of September 1974. Though we shall keep in mind that higher than inflation cannot be correlated with the weakness of the economy or the future of economy because we have the examples of China. Brazil and South Korea, where these countries have witnessed the 20 percent or higher inflation rate not for a year or two years, but for a decade and two decades and still they have cop up with it, they survived very beautifully and they are most developed nations right now. Let us go back to the Indian inflation. As I told you that since 1973 to 74 we had a highest inflation. If you look at the chart and the history of inflation since 1972, to December 2010, then we can see the variation in the inflation rate. Here in this chart, the blue dotted line shows all commodity inflation and the red line shows for the food inflation. If you look at December 90 onwards, then on the continuously on reducing trend and especially after April 2000, India has not witnessed higher than 10 percent inflation rate till August 2009. So, we had a quite a stable rate of inflation and that was not only in the food, but also in the oil commodity inflation rate. The only jump we have witnessed in food inflation was August 2009 onwards. Again, this last two years inflation comparison is in the red and blue line, where the red line shows oil commodity and the blue dotted line showing the food we can see that all commodity inflation is in quite in control since 2008 till now. Only as I mentioned in the previous slide that food inflation which started going high since April 2009 till December 2010, but which is now in coming below 10 percent and can be called as a inflation rate. This index again which shows the correlation between food inflation the two separate item of the food which is perishable food items and non perishable food item. It shows a clear relationship between both the item and it shows that there is not a much a gap between the perishable and non perishable food items. As you discussed so long about the inflation and the incidences of inflation. How we compute this inflation, the rate of inflation? The simplest example we can have is of United States Consumer Price Index. For the example, if we take on the 1st January 2010, US Consumer Price Index on the 202.416 and 1st January 2011 is 211.080. Then inflation would be 211 minus 202.416 divided by 202.416 multiply by 100 and that gives us 4.28 percent of rate of inflation. The most important part is the price index selected by the computer of inflation. As we can select the different price indexes for to compute inflation in the respective country and the change of the price index or 
the change of the weightage of the commodities in this respective price index will determine the rate of inflation. The popular price indexes are consumer price index popularly known as CPI, producer price index, commodity price index and core price index. Consumer price index is representing the seller's point of view. Consumer price index popularly known as CPI says the perspective of buyer. A consumer who buys certain things are the part of CPI and accordingly the CPI is computed. That the various consumer price indices in the world like CPI U in the United States or CPI W in the United States which are for the urban users or the daily wage labor and the clerical staff or RPI which is the retail price index in the United Kingdom or the RPX which exclude the mortgage but include all other housing loan facilities and the finances in that indices. Producer price index is a seller's point of view price index which is popularly known as a WPI wholesale price index in India and in the United States where the sellers the prices are considered as a parameter for the computation of inflation. The difference between CPI and WPI is that in PPI the producer price index we do not use the services part and that is why the, their argument to use consumer price index for the rate of inflation basis rather than WPI in India. But there is another argument given that as services always plays the role in the time of production of agriculture or the manufacturing, so they by default become the part of it and on a period of time they become stable or consistent with the pricing of the product. So, they have been taken care in the WPI. The commodity price index is for the selected commodities which are responsible for the particular industry and accordingly the price index or the inflation in this particular segment or the sector is computed. The core price index is for that product which is a normally key product for the production of the many things. It could be like steel which can make effect on the metal industry, on the heavy tools, the capital industries and the machine tools and infrastructure, construction etc. or it could be oil which can make the key role in the transportation which directly and indirectly affect all the prices of all other commodity. So, these are the price indexes which are popular in the across the globe. In India, the price index used by the government of India is wholesale price index. Now, the three most important characteristic of wholesale price index which are the major codes of selection of this index and the preference of this index over all other indices. First is it is a national coverage because it gets the data from across the country for the productions. Timeliness of release, it got release on time and it has been published for the entire public. So, everybody can have a look at it and availability in a very disaggregated format. These three are the key significance of the wholesale price index, but we should keep in mind that wholesale price index is computed for the rate of inflation computation the government of India is to release the data, but the CPIW which is the consumer price index for the workers is used for the government employees and other employees to increase the price and there is a debate on the CPIW and wholesale price index because CPIW has a little bit higher growth rate than the wholesale price index. If you look at the wholesale price index and the latest revision which happened in the wholesale price index, the weight of it are as follows. Initially, 1993-94 base was there and the overall value of was 100. In 2004 and 2005 basis, again the 100 basis has been done and the weightage are as follows. Primary articles 20.1 which was 22 in 93-94, fuel and power 14.9 against 14.3 in 1993-94 and manufacturer product is increased to 65 against 63.7 93-94.
primary article comprises of agriculture product, food product and raw material. Fuel and power is a major part of electricity, coal and petroleum. In manufactured product, these are the leather product, metallic product, chemical are the key component of this index. And on the basis of this index, we compute the inflation. This inflation has a different varieties according to the kind of the causes which are creating the inflation, accordingly the timing of inflation, according to the speed of inflation, there are the various type. But as a student of economics, we shall focus only on the causes which are economic in their nature. On that basis of the distribution of type of inflation, these are as follows. Currency inflation, which is caused due to the excess supply of currency in relation to the available output of goods and services. Another type is demand pull inflation or the excess demand inflation, which occurs when aggregate demand for goods and services in an economy exceeds the available supply. So, the prices for them rise in a market economy. Our economic type of inflation is cost push inflation, where the production rises for one reason or another reason and force the prices of finished goods and services to go up. The pricing power inflation occurs whenever the business in general decides to boost their prices to increase profit margins. This does not occur normally in the recession time, but when the economy is booming and sales are strong, the business houses they can make either the cartel and according to the cartel they can decide to increase the prices like what happened in the cases of aviation services or the business is in nature of oligopoly where one oligopolistic business house feel that if it will increase the price the rest of the competitor at the player will increase the price which normally happens in the entertainment industry or in the automobile industry where the one key player is increasing the price and the respective players responding accordingly. Another inflation is like sectoral inflation. This term applies whenever any of the other three factors hits a basic industry causing inflation there and since the industry hit is a major supplier of other industries as for example of steel or oil. It means due to the any of the reason like demand, supply or the profit margin, if the prices are going up then the inflation comes into the picture and that inflation is known as a sectoral inflation. The last type of inflation is deficit induced inflation. When the government is in deficit and to fulfill the deficit of budget, if the government decided to issue more currencies into the market, then the supply of money increases in the market and of course, the demand is of the money is not that, that high over the mark in the market because the supply of the goods and services are on the constant level. So, that fumes the market on the higher price side which causes the inflation. Let us see the cause which creates this inflation in the market. The cause are component cost, rising labor cost, government policies on tax and industry, a fall in exchange rate, industrial unrest and natural calamities. All these six factors can directly or indirectly affect on the negative side of cost means the increasing the price of the raw material that will by default increase the final price of the product and result into the cost push inflation. Another is demand pull inflation. The cause are higher demand by government stimulus, monetary stimulus, export boom, quality business environment and hoarding. Hoarding means stocking too much quantity by a retailer, by a consumer or by a trader or a business house. All these five factors can increase the demand in the market. It could be the government or the government's monetary policy or the higher export leaving the local consumer with the lesser quantity of good or a business environment and that will result into the demand pull inflation.
as we have started a discussion with the negative effects of inflation let's see what kind of effects inflation makes on the different people in our society effects on the section of societies are as follows the part of society are producers and businessmen investor labors debtor and creditor and consumers normally businessmen get benefited by the inflation due to the higher pricing level investor in the debt market get loss but the stock market might get benefit because of the price rise labor might get higher employment but because of the higher prices they might not be able to cope up with their demands in the market creditor are the person normally are in the benefit side because on whatever the rate of interest they have taken the some part of that will be adjusted with the rate of inflation consumers every person in the society is a consumer of products and as the prices are increasing if his earning is not increasing with the rate of inflation he is not on the gain side of the inflation as you have discussed the effect of inflation on our society let's see what are the economic effect of inflation saving discouraged public debt and expenditure increase increase in industry and employment and tax growth these are the four effects which normally comes in our economy people get discouraged to put their money in the government savings or the debt fund because they don't expect to receive the same value of the money which they have deposited in the saving funds the government expenditure increases because their computation or the planning got change as per the prices goes higher but the as the industry is making profit due to the price hike they tend to put more industries increase their capacity and that result into the higher employment in the society to control this inflation and to match the public debt and the expenditure of the government government has no choice but to increase the tax even all the indirect tax by default increases because the price of the product is increasing so the sales tax or the excise tax changes and increases accordingly effects of inflation and in the social political side and the moral sides social political sides we have seen recently in the 2010 in the egypt the government fall down and the major cause behind it over there was the price hike and of course that was the result of the inflation there are the many other incidences like origin of nazism which is caused due to the inflation another concept of moral effect says that whenever there is a higher rate of inflation in society there is erosion of social values and the moral values comes in existence the difference between the haves and the have nots increases and the people tend to get more greedy and the less trustworthy on each other and that result on the lower morals of the society as there are so many negative impacts of inflation the government wants to measure it and control it effectively the government can take different measures to control inflation the measures are related with the demand and supply of the money and the demand and supply of the goods and of course the trust and the faith in the government system and the economy of the country the fiscal measures taken by the government are tax increase reduction in government expenditure encouragement to savings by increasing the tax the people tempted not to put more industry or going for the new investment and that technically reduces the demand for the goods which will eventually re- leads to the reduction of the price and coming the inflation under control same way government try to reduce their expenditure on the different projects which will again reduce the monetary supply into the market and government encourages the people by giving them the several benefits to put the money in the saving fund or the debt fund which will again ensure the lower supply of money into the market the monetary measures taken by the government are reduction in money supply means increasing the price of repo rate or increasing the k 
case reserve ratio or the statutory liquidity ratio. Normally, Central Bank of India, known as Reserve Bank of India, does not change the SLR, but the repo rate and the CRR, the cash reserve ratio has been audited and changed the different time in the monetary policies to adjust the rate of inflation and the control on credit. This is again the byproduct of the monetary policy as whenever the government will increase the repo rate or the cash reserve ratio for the banks, the credit will again get costly and people will tempt to put less money investment and in the market. Economic measures taken by the government are production growth, check on hoarding, speculation and export, price control and rationing means increasing the production that means increase the supply into the market which will lower the price of the goods, controlling the hoarding and the speculation which will result into the high supply of the agriculture product and the other commodities in the market which will again reduce the price and the last is rationing. Here we complete a session of inflation. Let us summarize whatever we have discussed in our session. We will learn about the definitions of inflation given by the various economists, the incidences of inflation in India and different countries, the measurement of inflation, the various price indices being practiced across the globe, the type of inflation, the cause and effect of inflation and the last we understood the government measures to control inflation. Thank you.